from the Quran verses, it said that uh, Christ was not crucified, but somebody had taken his place. So from that, what I would believe is that God was a deceiver and he let the deception continue till 600 years. And one more problem is that I cannot make sure that what I see is correct or it is true or in the future God might change it or he may tell that you haven't seen that, you have seen something else. How would you? You want to tell That's the question? Yeah, that's a question. Yeah, your yeah. name, please. Your name, please. Naveen. Naveen. Yeah. It's okay. Bismillah, alhamdulillah. Actually, the verse that you're speaking about doesn't say it that way. Not in the English translation that I know. It doesn't, it doesn't imply God's deceiving people. Actually, what I, what I remember about the verse, it says that they did not kill him. Neither did they salib him, which means to put him on the cross. But rather the likeness of him was put on somebody else. And this is the person that goes to the cross. Okay? Let me clarify that. Let me clarify that, actually. The verse states that he was not uh, killed, he was not crucified, but it was made to seem that way. Instead, Allah lifted him up. It doesn't say how it was made to seem that way, meaning that somebody else was placed and his likeness put. This is something which comes out of the Gospel of Barnabas. Okay? So we just know that it was made to seem that way. People thought that they crucified him, but they didn't. Well, exactly I, how it took place, God alone knows. Actually, that's uh, uh, my question. Hold, hold on, hold on one second. Hold on. Okay. Uh, either way you look at it, I want to give you the answer, though, so you can get, get an idea. I got an email. In the email, this person, he said, I've been all over your websites. I like what you're saying. It makes sense that God is one. And I've thrown away this, guy, this idea of the Trinity. He was saying a lot of things toward Islam. He said, but when I come to this part, the same thing you're saying. He said, I got a problem. He said, it looks like what kind of God would I want to, you know, that would do something like this? And he's, it's an email. And he's saying that he would put an innocent person on the cross and let an innocent person die and suffer on the cross I cannot accept that and I wrote back to him and I said that's the way we feel about it too it's not our religion that teaches that that's Christian religion teaches that actually my hold on okay you ask your question and I understood your question and I'm giving you an answer take some time here okay listen up now the next thing is, when I wrote back to him, he wrote back to me again and he said, you know what? He said, I realized something. I never thought about it before. But when I thought it was a human being going to the cross, I thought it was terrible and wrong, especially if he's innocent. He said, but here I was all the time thinking it's fine for Jesus to be innocent and go to the cross. So he said, I realized that the one going to the cross, and it's from his scripture." It says that Jesus asked God, let this cup pass from me, even so thy will be done. He said, it looks like, why is Jesus asking for this and God won't give it to him? Because if God's not going to answer the prayer for Jesus, then he's sure not going to answer it for me. And also, and this is his statement, because he quotes from the two Gospels that say the same thing. The one on the cross said, uh, uh, according to the Gospels anyway, committed blasphemy with his last breath when he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani is a statement of kufr. This is not something that can be accepted by any Muslim, especially not any prophet, to say such a words as that. So it would indicate to him, the one writing to me, he said, it indicates to me that this means the one on the cross couldn't have been Jesus after all. And this question actually wound up being the way for this man to understand Islam and make his shahada. I hope Allah will guide you to understand that he never deceives anybody. But we deceive ourselves all the time. But he tells us in the very beginning of the Quran, right after the verses that I quoted to you right now about believing in the Bible, it also says that you believe in the next life, uh, the resurrection. It also that you will believe in the heaven and the paradise and the hell. And it also goes on and says that these are the successful people. These are the ones on the guidance from their Lord. These are successful. But right after that, it says in those 
uh, those people who are not believers, actually those who cover up the truth, kufar. It doesn't matter whether you warn them or warn them not. They're not ever going to believe anyway. And that's because Allah has placed a khatam or seal over their hearts and their eyes and over their uh, uh, hearing, eyes, and hearts. I want to get it in the right order. But anyway, the reason for that, if you said, look at that verse right there, never mind the other. This is clear. Allah is putting these seals on these people. Why? Never mind about deceiving somebody. This is sealing them off from any knowledge of it. They have no knowledge of it. Their hearts are sealed off. Their eyes are sealed off. Their hearing is sealed off. And so there would be a good question if you want to play a game with me. Go to that one. Because that's clearly Allah is saying it. You don't have to conjure up what does this verse mean. Look right here. It says it real clear. There are people who do that. And Allah does this to them. And why? They don't want to be guided. And we got a saying down in Texas. You can drag a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. So you're sitting right here right now in Chennai, India. Scholars of Islam have traveled from all over the world to be here for this. And we're speaking in plain, simple English. And if you can believe there's a God, and He's one, and He has no partners, and if you can believe you should be doing what He wants you to do, and you're trying to do that, you may be a whole lot closer to Islam than you think. But I'll sure pray for you and ask a lot of guy again. I'm sure all the Muslims will do the same. Thanks for a good question. Next. Actually, my question is, it took 600 years for us, for God to tell us that it has been a deception. So my question is, how do you explain that 600 years gap? That is not okay. right. No. What no. you're saying is not right. There were people who argued about that point at the time that it happened. And this is recorded. But I'm going to ask you a question. Have you, excuse me, have you studied any of the works of the scholars at that time in the first 200 years after Jesus? Go to my website. I'm going to help you out. Go to my website, islamdamar.com slash Bible, and read what the scholars have been saying for years about this. And then if you want to go to Barnes & Noble online and pick up the books, you can read it for yourself. There's been a di big discrepancy about if there was somebody on the cross and who it was. You can read it in uh, the, the book called Messianic Legacy. Another book, it's by the same authors called... The Holy Blood, Holy Grail, and Dead Sea Scrolls Deceptions. Go read it for yourself. This is not something that just popped up 600 years afterwards. And Allah says about that in the Quran that they are, they have been at 600 years. That was said that they were still disputing the issue at the time. Is that pretty close, Chief? Hmm. Yeah, the point our brother is making is that you are making a statement that people were deceived up until the revelation of the Quran. But the point is that after Jesus departed, what happened in Jerusalem, what was known as the Jerusalem church, who was it headed by? By James. What were the teachings of James? The teachings of James were that Jesus was a Messiah, that God was one. And they continued to pray as Jesus prayed, falling down on his face in prostration. And they didn't eat pork. And all of the things which now we associate with Muslims. That's the reality. The fact that Paul promoted the idea that Jesus was crucified and all the other things and the Gospels were then invented to match those teachings. That is something which took place later. Because these same Gospels that you're holding up as evidence that Jesus was actually crucified, these Gospels were, in, were disputed. They were not accepted until the 4th century, 400 years after Jesus' time. So you, you, know, you need to know a bit more about the history of Christianity, the Council of Nicaea, and all of these other things to really get a true picture. Because there was no deception. The main message of Jesus was that God was one and that he alone deserved to be worshipped and that he, Jesus, was the son of man, not the son of God. He was a prophet of God who brought a reminder to that message. And those true followers of his followed that message and they continued to follow it. And Islam is an extension of that same message. And that is what Jesus actually taught. So there's no deception there. The deception comes 
from those who went the route of Paul. Paul who is the real founder of what you know today as Christianity, which was not the teachings of Jesus, but the teachings of Paul. And, uh, there would be one more religion like they will accept Christ has been crucified and uh, they will believe in one God. That could be a possibility, you know, if uh, whatever you have said has been uh, right. But the issue is not a question of possibilities. The issue is the question of what Jesus taught, what those who followed him taught, what was the message, and what does Islam say? So, Islam, the religion, as we know it, which came after Jesus' time, we hold that we are carrying the same message of Jesus. The Quran clarifies the misconceptions that people have held about Jesus. And this message has spread. It has spread to now a quarter of the world's population are Muslims, and it continues to spread. In America, between three and four hundred people accept Islam every day. Who are these people? These are Christian people who are accepting Islam. Why are they accepting it? Because of the truth. So this is what the brother is saying, praying for you. And I pray for you too. That you reflect on the message of Islam and look and see, is it the truth? If it is the truth, then you need to accept it. Barakallah Allah bless you.